Saturday, the 9th of October 2021. Udal, Uyir and Atma. First, he had made me frustrated as I could not find the answers regarding Udal, Uyir, and Atma, listening to talks online and reading the books. Praying that someone in our circle could have stumbled on these answers, as they said in meditation, during the past two years of solitude brought on by Agathia, and the forced confinement due to the pandemic. Sadly none had direct experience that they could share. Figuring for myself what it could probably be, I posted my understanding at Quest for the Soul and Spirit. Then Agathia came immediately giving us a brief explanation through a memo. Over the past days, as I brood over the contents of the memo and the answers, I am beginning to get insights and understanding and see it rather clearly now. I see the pattern and the design behind all past happenings. I see all the previous reading, learning, and experiences fall into place in this grand design. I understand life better. Instead of dishing out answers the easy way or passing out the answers to the questions, he had us read and talk about it, figure out for ourselves and finally gave us the answer sheet. Talk about God makes us aesthetical and elated. But the feeling soon goes away, just like attending a motivation course, gives us a boost for some time, and it dies down. The state of ecstasy is to be sought. And to forever remain in it is the idea. Taviyogi said that we should learn to extend these brief moments. Agathia too says in the memo to us that practicing to live in these heightened moments of vibration one shall reach him. The intensity of the vibration gathers momentum, and extends to the range of arise. Hence man becomes God. Not that he physically transforms into the many forms of his, but takes on the nature of God that is the vibration, the dance of the particles, as Balakumaran I reveals, as having seen, when he asked Yogi Ramsurakuma to show him God and the Yogi stroked his back. In an introduction to the philosophy of Ramalinga Swami, by Dr. C. Srinivasan, published by Alakya Nalayam, Taruchi, 1968 we learn of Uya Anubhavam. As we have come to learn that the breath is Uya, Uya Anubhavam would mean experiencing the breath. In expanding this experience by prolonging these rare moments, when there is the spontaneous flow of God that would be Arul Anubhavam. Spending time with my grandchildren shows me that I need to unlearn and relearn to become like them. I need to become a child again not that I become dependent on others for all my needs, but to adopt the nature of a child in seeing things. I ask my grandchildren often what is in their thoughts, what are they looking at as often they are lost in thoughts for brief moments. These are the brief moments where they make contact with the Atma. In those moments of a close encounter with the Divine Grace, when we lose our identity, when the I is lost, the Atma is revealed. It becomes the watcher without registering the sights, sounds, and thoughts. This is Atma Anubhavam that is said to be the culmination of Jnanam. When Agathia said the Atma in its subtle form stays from one to five Varagai with the child before it's veiled, this was interesting as I grew up hearing the story from my mother that Lord Brahma, who determines our fate, and which Agathia speaks of in the memo too, speaks to the newborn child revealing her life day by day. When the fetal skull closes the conversation with God ends. This is why we see all sorts of emotion in a newborn. The child smiles, cries etc. in its sleep. The elders always warn us not to press the soft spot on the head. We feel this spot throbbing when we place our palm on it. After reading Agathia's memo in the past post, a reader shared the following regarding this belief in her homeland of Kerala. In Kerala, Maybe you heard about or two, special attention with reverence is given to the newborn baby's top of the head. The portion where the skull is not closed. We say that the soul connects to you through that pit. 
When Agathia told this I thought about it. Science describes the skull of a child as follows. The fetal skull contains cranial bones that have not yet joined together. The spaces that lie between the large cranial bones, the frontal bone, the parietal bone, the temporal bone and the occipital bone, are the membrane-bound fontanelle. This is why newborns have a soft spot on their head. The anterior fontanelle is the largest of the fontanelles. It forms a diamond-shaped structure and can take between 12 and 18 months to form the coronal suture that joins the frontal bone to the parietal bones. The anterior fontanelle closes at about 12 to 18 months and is larger than the other. The posterior and sphenoidal fontanelle appear more triangular-shaped and close within a couple of months. The posterior fontanelle will close to form the lambdoidal suture that joins the occipital bone with the parietal bones. The sphenoidal fontanelles, one lying laterally at each side of the cranium, will close to form the squamosal suture. The squamosal suture is bordered anteriorly by the frontal bone, superiorly by the parietal bone, posteriorly by the squamous portion of the temporal bone, and inferiorly by the greater wing of the sphenoid bone that joins the temporal lobes with the sphenoid. Next is Atma Darasanam, where we taste God. The individual is charged with divine grace. Beyond this only the experience of Brahman exists. This is Samadhi. It is a journey of transformation. The many transformations that Agathya pointed out on this journey to this ignorant seeker are only making sense now. In revealing the Udal, Uyir, and Atma, he has enlightened me. Agathya in his memo speaks about creation beginning with what is closest to us and visible, the body or the Udal, and how it takes form and shape in the womb. Just as creation is a result of the Pancha Maha Bhutam coming together, the body too is a product of these five elements. Udal that is a combination of the nun Uyir in certain proportions, present in the five materials takes on the form of a pin dam in the womb. The Pancha Budham namely water, earth, sky, air, fire are derived from both the parent's body to produce the body of the developing baby. When the proportions differ, there appear defects in the baby. Hence, these proportions are determined by Lord Brahma as the body takes form. The Atma keeps both the Udal and Uya under its control in a secretive, subtle manner. This subtlety stays from one to five varagai with the child before it's veiled. I cannot tell you the reason for it to be veiled now. Nevertheless, the Atma will return unto him depending on his actions. Maharishi Mahesh Yogi in his Science of Being and Art of Living, a Meridian book, 1995, wrote that there is one being, the absolute existence of unmanifested nature. The cosmic intelligence or creative power which is the nature of being, initiated the first sound or vibration that generated prana out of itself, hence starting the process of creation and evolution, with a purpose. And that purpose, he says, is expansion of happiness. Here we can relate to Agathya's memo. Being or Arai brought forth Atma, Agathian, as a vibration that generated Uyir, or prana, or breath, and brought forth life. To connect back with this vibration from the source we need to enhance the vibration within. Hence we see why mantras and names of deities and saints are chanted and recited. We see why hymns and devotional songs are sang at temples. We see why yagam, yagna and homam is carried out. All these accentuate the vibration in us and bridge us to the source. If the uya or breath comes within after the moment of conception in the womb and a solid form in the proportion as determined by Lord Brahma takes shape, if the first signs of life emerges when breath or uya is given or rather gifted to this mass of solid form, the Atma's journey, on the contrary, starts very much earlier, at the start of our lives, nay before this birth itself, in some cases, often without our knowledge. Agathya said that Lord Muruga, Valal, Ramalinga Adigal, and he had come years before even before I knew them and began to worship them. This explains the belief that each individual is assigned an Atma or a guardian angel from the moment it takes its role in the Divine's play or Lila. 
The Atma who is with us in the Divine Kingdom keeps us company for a certain period and veils itself as we grow out of the Atma's shadow. A growing fetus is in the care of the Atma. His or her first awareness comes from the Atma. Upon taking birth the child moves according to the dictates of the Atma until it becomes aware of its surroundings. Walking initially in the shadows of the Atma, a child is unaware between right and wrong, does not know fear, does not know the differences, as in duality etc. Growing up now, worldly knowledge takes precedence then. They begin to absorb all that is seen and heard, all that is taught. The senses bombard them. New things are learned and new skills acquired. Upon reaching adolescence coming to know and differentiate right from wrong, and when his or her ego is inflated, the Atma moves into the shadow. The late Dr. Krishnan told me that karma does not touch these kids until they attain puberty. When we come to learn that we have the freedom to make choices, to decide, and he she knows that he she has a choice and a say in his her life, when he or she begins to take charge of his life it is only fair that he takes on the responsibility and the burden of his actions too. Karma begins its count. We become tied down to matters of the world and lose any memory of the Atma that we once have had. We break ties with the Atma that accompanied all this while. But the Atma is forever faithful hiding behind the veil and watching us. This is what the old generation calls or the silent witness. Though it is silent occasionally it comes to save us from making bad decisions that could alter the path that is laid for us. Finally, when the moment is right to set us back on track, after we have seen the effects of our karma and our desires come to fruition, the Atma draws aside the veil and shows itself. The Atma comes to help us out of the mess we made in its absence by helping us deal with our karma. At the appropriate time and place, the Atma kindles our interest or memory of a past life and brings us on their path or back on track if we had started walking on the path in some previous birth. 